have to one take this thing. Everyone's uploading their Apple videos. So Apple held their annual September hardware event today. And in spite of the weeks of surprisingly accurate leaks, there were still a few surprises. First of all, Apple did the right thing and named the phone simply iPhone 11, saving pedantic nerds like me from having to correct everyone when they say iPhone X or iPhone XS. And they announced the price starting at $699, which is cheaper than last year's 10R, which launched at $750. They also brought in the Pro moniker that they use in most of their other product lines and announced the iPhone 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max at their normal prices of $999 and $1099. They also finally added the one feature that I've been waiting for on the Apple Watch for quite literally years. Not a sensor for how stressed out you are and always on display. And I'm ready to give you guys that and the rest of the show highlights after this message from our sponsor, Vertigear. Vertigear's PL4500 RGB LED upgrade kit wirelessly connects to your PC and features tons of color customization options with audio, visual sync, and more. Check it out now at the link in the video description. When I saw rumors that the new iPhones would be called iPhone 11, 11 Pro, and 11 Pro Max, I thought for sure that that meant that they were scrapping the 10R and its entire concept and bringing us a lineup of three new phones, each with an OLED display. I was wrong. Not only does the iPhone 11 keep the 6.1 inch liquid retina LCD display, but last year's 10R is actually still going to be for sale. And since the new iPhone 11 is launching for $50 less than that one did, the 10R is actually getting an even larger discount than we are used to seeing and will now be available for $599. The iPhone 8 also still exists, but now at a $150 discount, putting it at $449. Apple seems determined to compete across not quite all, but most of the pricing spectrum now. Fascinating. Now, unlike the iPhone XR, the 11 does have a dual camera setup with a 2x optical zoom. There's a 12 megapixel wide camera with a 26 millimeter lens paired with a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with a 120 degree field of view. What's cool is that even when you're using the narrower lens, the app will actually put a kind of blurred out frame of what you could see if you switched over to the ultra wide and then lets you switch lenses with a tap or use a zoom wheel to transition between them. They've also added a night mode that turns on automatically and the front camera is getting slow-mo so you can take what they're calling slow fees. On top of a bunch of other fun things like next-gen smart HDR, semantic rendering, and multi-scale tone mapping. The bottom line is that the pro photos they show off in the keynote always look amazing. So you're gonna have to rely on people like us to actually put the iPhone 11 through its paces next to other 2019 flagships to see how it's gonna perform in the real world. Make sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss it. Next up, there's the 5.8 inch iPhone 11 Pro and the 6.5 inch 11 Pro Max. Kind of sounds like a workout supplement, doesn't it? These phones are more like last year's 10S and 10X Max because remember, all these new phones use the same body design as last year's models. And in the case of the 11 Pro, last, last year's model, the iPhone 10, which is probably why they barely showed the front of the device during the keynote. The giant notch and the thick bezels looked outdated back in 2017, and they haven't aged well to say the least. Anyway, the 11 Pro is carved out of a single piece of glass. Wow, that is really cool. And wrapped in surgical grade stainless steel. It comes in four colors, including midnight green with a matte textured finish. And the Pro models do get OLED displays once again, this time 15% more power efficient while also claiming a peak brightness of 1200 nits. Apple says the displays on these phones are benefiting from the tech in their upcoming Pro Display XDR. Remember the one with the thousand dollars sold separately stand? And therefore they have dubbed them Super Retina XDR noting that they have the highest pixel density of any Apple device. Although they appear to have the same pixel density as last year's phones, so... 
Marketing. By the way, as long as we're marketing, head over to ltstore.com, check out our sweet merch like this shirt. But what's the deal with these three creepy looking cameras? Well, you got a telephoto, a wide, and an ultra wide for four times optical zoom. Just like the non-pro, you can toggle between them, giving you more freedom and creativity, and pending an update this fall, the Deep Fusion image processing system will actually make a composite image by stitching together nine photos, eight of which it actually takes before you ever hit the button to create a hyper-detailed image with very little noise. Each of the new phones packs Apple's latest system on a chip, the A13 Bionic. According to Apple, it's the most efficient chip they've ever made, despite being 20% faster. So they're using hundreds of voltage domains so that no power is wasted, and apparently this helped the 11 Pro net four extra hours of battery life over the 10s and five extra if you spring for the 11 Pro Max. Pro Max! But the keynote wasn't just about iPhones. Apple also launched a seventh generation entry-level iPad with a larger screen in the same footprint, as well as the Apple Watch Series 5, which, like I said before, finally has an always-on display, so you can actually use it as a cot dang watch! It's got variable refresh rate between one and 60 Hertz to allow it to keep the same 18 hour battery life that they've always advertised. So I gotta say, given the state of Android wearables, I am actually pretty excited about it and I'm gonna give it a shot. You guys heard it here first, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna switch to Apple for real this time because the Apple Watch has had only one thing holding it back for me so far, the lack of an always on display. Just like this video lacked this segue to our sponsor. If you use Wi-Fi a lot on your smartphone, why pay a fixed monthly data plan? Stop paying for what you don't use. Switch to Ting. With Ting, you can use their calculator at linus.ting.com to see just how much you'd save. They've got nationwide LTE coverage using both T-Mobile and Sprint's networks. They will never block, throttle, or interfere with your online access, and there are no contracts. You can try Ting out for a month with no strings attached. They've got award-winning customer support where you'll talk to real people instead of robots. And if you're not comfortable with the phone, you can use chat, email, and even Discord. Their server is ting.com slash discord. So what are you waiting for? Get a SIM card from their Ting shop at linus.ting.com and get $25 off your first bill. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more Apple content and also not more Apple content. We don't actually do that much Apple content around here.